you know how destroyed we are? We come here teaching you how great you are. We come here trying to build our people up. We ask our own sister what her name is, and she refuses to tell us, like we're her enemies. What's your name? My name is Yawanatha. Well, the Bill of Jerry Funk shot out go about hold out backsliding daughter Reed. For the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. The reason why she is a single woman um, no, is because I'm, I'm and she's been gotta, drinking I and gotta, drunk. I, I, I have a husband. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's going to rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non-violent, violent, violent faith movement. IUIC. Bro? Yeah, see, you got emotional, right? You said because the church, the church don't teach about this, right? But let me ask you a question now. All that you've heard so far, do you think is important information? Do you think it's important? I can't hear you. Why do you think it's important? Give me Revelation 11, verse 7. I'm gonna show you something about the state of our people today and us here in, in Babylon, the great America, right? Brother, y'all come, come over here, bro. Come a little closer. Let me show you something about our people and what you're hearing today. The word of God that's coming out is speaking to your spirit, especially you men. You men are the ones that are most important because you are the men that's going to be on the front line of the Most High God's army. You understand that? They want to keep you in sin. They want to keep you in an emotional state. When you hear the word, you cry instead of get angry. You understand that? Read that. Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. Right. And when they shall have finished their testimony, verse 8, verse, 8. verse 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. So the Bible is saying that their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, right? Who are the dead bodies? What dead bodies are they talking about? Uh, what happened? They're talking about you. They're talking about the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American men and women. Do you understand that? Read that again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. So the Bible is saying that the, the Israelites, the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, their dead bodies are lying in the street of the great city. What is that great city then? Right here in Babylon, the great America, right? But how are we dead though? Because you're physically walking around, right? You're walking around, you're not, you're not physically dead, right? Read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. It's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Now let's see how are you dead though. Give me that in Proverbs. Proverbs. Read that. 2116, right? Bring it up. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So why did God call us dead just now? Read it again. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding. Why did God call us dead? Brother John. We because we have no understanding of the Most High God's Word. Right. We don't have no understanding of what your role is here on earth. You don't understand, like the officer was bringing, uh, the captain was bringing out that you are God on this earth. Right. You're ordained to rule this earth. But well, how can you rule this earth when you're in the midst of sin? How can you rule this earth when you're eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster? How can you rule this earth when you're having sex and not marrying your women? How can you rule this earth when you're strung out on drugs? How can you rule this earth when you're walking around and stepping into the Christian church and preach to a false image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? How can you rule? Read that again. 
The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding right. shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So when you wander out of the way of God's understanding, now you're considered what, Brother Josh? What are you considered? You are dead. You understand that? You're in the congregation of the dead. You understand that? Give me that. Baruch chapter 3, verse 4. O oh Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. It says, O oh God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Of the dead Israelites. You follow me, Josh? Dead. Are you following, right? You gotta, you gotta speak up a little bit. You're a man, right? Right. You're a man, and the reason why you're acting that way is because your oppressor has designed a system to make you the way that you are now. Afraid to speak up, afraid to man up. This brother right here crying. That's a beautiful thing. You understand that? Because the Spirit of God can now work in you and you have a platform to build yourself up. You understand that? All right, get Revelation 11 again. Read that. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And our dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. So right now, all of our men are walking around dead here on this earth. Here. You're walking around dead right here in Babylon, and your enemies love it that way. The system is set up that way to keep you that way. The God system is not about that. Read on. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. It's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt because in Sodom and Gomorrah, what was the main sin that they committed? They were homosexuals, right? Yeah. And, and cannot a man and a man get married today here in Babylon the Great? Teach! When you look at the back of your dollar bill, what do they have on the back of your dollar bill? Uh, they got... I can't hear you. They got George Washington, but what's on the back? So, give me the... Open your flyer. That's you got your flyer? Open your flyer, bro. Let me see your flyer real quick. This flyer has the best information you can ever have. Now, you see that right there? Pick that up. Pick that up. Now you see that dollar bill right there, right? Read that again. Spiritually yeah. called. Well, spiritually, it's called Sodom and Egypt. So it says, your dead bodies lie in a great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. What do you see right there? What is that, Brother Josh? What is it? It's an Egyptian pyramid. You understand that? Because we represent Egypt. So what is that telling you? That your bodies, your dead bodies is lying in the street of the great city. Right. This is spiritual Sodom in Egypt today. You understand that? You read verse 11. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, right. the spirit of life from God entered in. What do you think the spirit of life from God is? Oh, man. It's so what is the spirit of life from God uh, that's going to enter yeah. into the dead Israelites? What's that spirit of life? That's the best I know that. Give me Proverbs 7 and 2. Proverbs 7, verse 2. I want y'all to follow. You can't read. You can learn to read, right? Read that. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. It said, so after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God is going to enter into you. That's only going to come by the gospel being preached by the men that you see here now. You understand that? And eventually, as the spirit of life deals with you, you're going to start preaching that thing. Read. Keep my commandments and live. By keeping God's commandment. He brought out cross-dressing, right? He brought out wearing your fringes, right? The God has a dietary law, right? Keep my commandments and do what? And live. And live. Go back to Revelation 11, verse 8. Verse 11 now, read. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. After three days and a half, you're witnessing the spirit of life from God enter into the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native American. We wouldn't be standing up here now teaching to you and teaching to the masses without the spirit of life from God working with us. You understand that, Josh? Right. You understand that? Read. And they stood upon their feet. And then they stood upon their feet. Lord, will you start standing, Josh? You understand that? Are you ready to stand? Yeah. Right, because you've been laying down all your life, calling yourself an African American, not knowing who you are, not being the man of the Lord that you're ordained to be. Right. None of our men are being that right now. Read. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. Why do you think great fear fell upon them that, that, that witnesses teaching them? white man is happy with you learning who you are? Get out. No, they're not happy. Why? Uh, they think they are. 27.
They think they're the power. They think they're the power, right? But what is going on now? If we teach you who you are and teach you how to conduct yourself as a God on this earth, what will happen to them? Teach them how to What will happen to them, Josh? Speak up. You don't know? Read it again. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life of from God entered into them. Go ahead. And they stood upon their feet. Go ahead. And great fear fell upon them. Great fear fell upon the nations. You know why? Because the second a certain number of men wake up and are sealed with the, with the laws of the Most High God in their spirit, their kingdom is over now. Yeah. You're at war today. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man is at war today. Right. You're at war in Charleston, South Carolina. Right. They're at war in keeping you docile, dumb, and they want you to remain dead. Do right. you understand it? Give me Isaiah 51, verse 20. They want you to remain dead. They want you to remain asleep, not knowing who you are. You understand that? Because that's how their kingdom gets to continue and maintain on this earth here. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51 and verse 20. Yeah. Thy sons have fainted. So the Bible is saying that the sons of God have fainted now. Right. When you faint, meaning you passed out. You lost consciousness of who you are, who your God is, and what your role is on this earth today. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets. Now we lie at the head of all the streets. What is yeah. the head of the streets, bro? Right there on your corners right there. Didn't the brother just got shot up here like blank. this week sometime? Blank. Blank. Is there not gang membership and gang banging going on here in Charleston, South Carolina? Definitely. It's not gang banging, drug dealing, and prostitution going on right here at the bus stop. Bring it out. That doesn't go on here? They want to listen, no. Yeah, they are going to listen. You're looking at men that used to be like that, that have listened. That's you right. don't ever doubt the power of the most high that comes out. Read it again from the top. Thy sons have fainted. But the Bible is saying that the sons of God have fainted. They've lost consciousness. Read. Right. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. They, they uncontrollable men now. Uncontrollable young men. That our brothers and sisters are afraid to walk out of their house at nighttime now. That's right. You can't walk the streets now because you think some dude, some knucklehead is going to rob you. Right. Or rape your mother or rape your sister. Right. Or just beat you up just for the hell of it. That's right. A gang initiation type of deal. That's what right. that going on here, Josh? Speak up, Josh. Pretty much, right? It is going on here. The Bible is talking about you, brother. Right. The Bible is talking about what's going on right here in America. Read. Right. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Now you got to understand it. They're full of the fury of the Most High God. Now, the reason why we're ignorant, the reason why we hate each other, the reason why we kill one another is because we're filled with the fury of God. God hates to see us this way. The Most High God is punishing us for going against his law, statutes, and commandments. You understand right. that? Right. Read. The rebuke of thy God. Go Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken, but not with wine. So the Most High God is telling you to pay attention, black man. Right. Pay attention. Hear this, thou drunken, but not with wine. Right. right? Read on. Thus saith the Lord thy God, Go the Lord and thy God that leadeth the cause of his people. Read on. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling. What you got to understand, Josh, is that the Most High God has taken out of our hands now the cup of trembling. We're no longer on no slave plantations. How you doing today, sis? Right. We're no longer on no slave plantations. Ignorant. It's not 1969 when we think that marching hand in hand with our oppressor is the way to go. Right. You understand that? We know that. How you, what's your name, sis? What's your name, sis? I'm learning. I'm your brother. What's your name? All right, we'll continue to learn. Right, read on. Even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Even the dregs of the cup of the most high's fury. You, 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 know, you know how destroyed we are? We come here teaching you how great you are. We come here trying to build our people up. We ask our own sister what her name is, and she refuses to tell us, like we're her enemy. You understand that? That is a psychological issue there, Josh. And that is why we need you to learn, and we need you to learn, sis. I didn't say that to make you upset, sis. I'm just telling you how destroyed we are as a nation of people to the point where I ask you what your name is. No, let me tell you something. No, I read. Thou shalt no more drink it again. What we're trying to tell you, sis, and you, brother Josh, is that no, no, the dregs no, no. of the cup, the poverty that you live in, the destroyed state of mind that you live in, the fact that you don't even know your nationality, the word of God is fixing that for you. You understand that? The word of God is fixing that for you now, Josh. Sis, pay attention. Read. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict.
inflict thee. And that is going to go into the hand of the enemies now. That's the right. same people that put us in shackles and chains. That's the right. same people that rape your mothers and your daughters, sisters. The same know. people that would have raped you. You understand that? You don't need no mic. I saw the demon in you from a mile away, sis. How the hell you asking for a mic? I asked you for your name. You couldn't even give it to me. That shows you that you have hatred and you need to repent and fix your spirit. You understand that? If you humble yourself down and repent, then we can deal with you. Read. Which have said to thy soul, bow down. So that's what the enemy is telling our soul now, to bow down. That sister there has bowed down her soul to the enemy. Josh, don't pay attention to that demon. Read. That we may go over. And now, you understand something? The enemy has just walked all over the sister I'm and they're walking enemy. all over you. You understand that, Josh? That enemy is trying to take that I word out of your mouth, Josh. Pay attention. Girl. Read. And thou hast laid thy body. And you've laid your body down now. You understand that? Sis, I'm going to ask you again. What is your name, sis? What is your name, sis? What's your name? My name is Yuanathan. I My represent name. Israel United in Christ. What is your name? Josh, come here. What no. is your name? No, you see? No. You see that demon? I was you see that demon, right? I say, read the next, read the next chapter now. Read that. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength, O oh Zion! Josh! 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 Pay attention, Josh. Listen to me, Josh. The Bible is telling you, Josh, and the Bible is telling you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men to awake, Josh. Awake! Read it again from the top. Awake! Awake! Put on thy strength! Oh, Zion! So the Bible is telling you to put your strength on now, Zion. Since you need to put your strength on. And right. Get that demon off. You need an exorcism. Right. Your, right. your spirit needs to be cleansed right now. Right. You understand that, John? Read. Put on thy beautiful garment. Now is your time to put on your beautiful garments now. Read. Oh, Jerusalem! Now he's telling you to do what now? Come back to your heritage. Come back to your nationality. Start keeping the Most High God Sabbath day holy. Get the order in marriage correct, John. Start taking, you start as a black man, take control of your community and not following after the sisters. You understand that the Most High made that thing. Give me that in, um, uh, God has made a woman can pass a name. Give me that. Because that's what you're seeing now. She saw that spirit in you, John. You understand that? The same way the brother was up there crying. Our men right now have a very weak and submissive spirit. Right? That's not, that's not the same spirit on our sisters. Read that. I'm going to show you something that's going on with our people. You understand that? And the reason why she felt so confident to step up in your face right in front of you. She don't know you from a can of paint. But she can step up in front of you and tell you to humble down to her. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 22. How long will thou go about? Oh, thou backsliding I'm daughter. I'm so the I'm Bible I'm is asking, woman. how long shalt thou go about, O oh, thou backsliding daughter? Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. The reason why she is a single woman um, no, is because, and she's been drinking and drunk. Read. A woman shall come past a man. Guess what, though? Now, she says she has a husband, right? And what, if you would you want your wife out here in the midst of 20 and 30 no, men no, combating no, against no, them? No. It's obvious that that woman in our household has done that. Read that again. A woman shall do what? A woman shall come past a man. That woman has come past a man now. That should anger you, John. That should anger you. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about your women now being over you? How do you feel about that? Huh? You're not going to let it affect you? So do you believe in that, though? What are you supposed to tell that woman now that's, that's running her mouth against the prophets? Give me that in Corinthians 14. What do you think the Bible says about her actions? What do you think? You don't know? I'm going to show you what the Bible says because you're not, it's not the last time that you're going to see us. You understand that? Lord's will, you got a flyer. You call that number on the flyer. Lord's will, you start to learn and build yourself up because you are ordained to take control over your own community, John. That's your job. You don't need to hear nothing about God from no woman. You understand that? You must learn from another man. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14 and verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. The Bible is saying let your women keep silence in the churches, John. It's, read that again. Let your women keep silence in the churches. So guess what? When the word of God is coming out, this next time a woman comes in your face, you sis, you need to keep your mouth shut. The Bible is coming out. You understand that? Because the Bible says this. Read it again. Let your women keep silence in the church.
you read. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Because it's not permitted for them to speak. They have no permission to speak at all in the churches, God. You understand that? You are the head of the church. But the first thing you got to do now is come back to your heritage and your nationality. Let me show you something real quick. How the word of God is going to start dealing with you. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick. Because there's something that's going on with you. You heard about women wearing pants, right? Are uh, our men wearing a dress? No, you haven't seen um who, who wore a dress recently? Buster Rhymes wearing a dress. Pup Daddy wearing a dress. They, Tyrese wearing a dress. You got Young Thug on trial, a gangster, and he took a, a his album cover is a, is a damn prom dress. Right? They want you to wear a dress, Brother John. You understand that? Because they want you to be the woman on this earth here. They want you to be below your own women. Right. You understand that, John? Well, let me show you something. Here's the first step, though, in getting your mind right. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. Read it out. I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The Bible is saying that the head of every man is Jesus Christ. Now, the captain just went over who Jesus Christ was, didn't he? What color was Jesus Christ, John? Right now. What's the true image of He's a black man, right? right. He's a black man. How you doing, bro? What's your name? Check this out. Dean. Dean. You see, you see how easy it was for Dean to tell us his name? That let you know that that's not the right spirit right there, John. You understand that? Right. It don't take much to identify that thing. We need to get from the top. Dean, pay attention because this applies to you too, Reed. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the Bible is saying that the head of every man, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man specifically, is Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. Do you understand that, Dean? You understand that, John? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Read that again. And the head of the woman is the man. Read that again. And the head of the woman is the man. Brother Dean, what did that verse just say? The head of the woman is the man, right? The so-called black man. I'm talking to two black men, right? So the so-called black man, you're the head of your women. You understand that? We have a woman here that doesn't understand that, though, Dean and John. You understand that, right? Read. And the head of Christ is God. And then Christ has a head, too. So there's no trinity. Read. Every man bring or prophesy. It says every man that is in earshot of the Bible of prophecy. Read. Having his head covered. And when you have your head covered, does what? Dishonoreth his head. He dishonors his head. And who is the head of the man, John? It's Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. That's the one that's waking you up today. The one that's going to give you salvation, John. You understand that? So what are you supposed to do with that hat on your head while the word of God is coming out? You're supposed to take that thing off in honor of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You understand that? So what are you going to do? Take your hat off then. Take it off. That's right. And when you go into, think about that type of submission. Because when you go into the Esau's court system, when you go into the so-called white man's court system, they don't allow you to wear a hat on your head. Right. They, they make sure you take that thing off. And to, to submit yourself to the so-called white man, you do that thing. You understand that? So your level of humility, that shows that the most high God is dealing with you. Right. You understand that? Do you see what just happened, sis? That brother there humbled down to the word of God. I agree with you. All right, so you do agree. So who is it? Is there order in marriage? Is the man over the woman? The man is over the woman every time. The okay, man is so the now, the house. so now, do you yeah. get First Corinthians fourteen and forty? Because John, we read that for you, right? I'm gonna see if you agree with it. Yeah. Let all things be done decently and in order. So now, all things must be done decently and in order, right? So what is the order? Now? Verse thirty-three. For God is not the author of confusion. God's not the author of confusion. Read. But of peace, right. as in all churches of the saints. Right. So we need peace. And what you just saw right there was a little bit of, of, of friction, right? That means that it's not of God. Okay, good. All praises. All right, now we're going to show you read. Let your women keep silence in the churches. So the Bible is saying, and the church is here. Now, we didn't learn that in the Christian church, right? We have female pastors, right? There's female pastors, right? Right? So, yes, there are female pastors. But that is not of the word of God. That is not of the Holy Spirit when our women talk when the Bible is coming out. You understand that? That's why I took offense to it. Read. Read again for the top. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. So it's not permitted for our women to speak when the Bible is coming out, and we stand hard on that thing. So now, so if you agree with that, does God have a dress code, sis? And can, I ask you, can I ask you what your name is? What's your name, sis? Leticia. Leticia. All praises to the most. Clap it up for Sister Leticia. We got 
I don't do it too wrong. So you see that, John? But it's not hatred. You understand that? But as a man, you got to be firm in your understand your belief and also be willing to forgive and help your sister out and have compassion on them. The same way Christ forgave us and have compassion on us. You understand that? You understand that, right? So now, does God have a dress code, Sister Letitia? I don't know. You don't know? So now we're going to show you. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Right. No woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible is saying that the woman should not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Do you agree with that, John? A woman should not be wearing man's clothing, right? Do you agree with that, sis? I don't, I don't know what that means. Teach me. I'm here okay, to learn. Okay, read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And it says, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Read. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So now the Most High is dealing with what we're supposed to be wearing now. How we're supposed to dress and present ourselves as the sons and daughters of the Most High God, right? right. Read that again from the top now. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. All right, so I'm going to ask a question. What do women wear that pertains to a man today? They wear pants, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. So do you agree that women are not supposed to be wearing pants? If that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says, right? Now read, read the next verse. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Sister Letitia, you've seen men wearing dresses, correct? Yeah. And they're pushing that now more and more in society. God is against that thing. You understand that? Read. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. When you do those things, you're an abomination unto God. You know, so if God is looking down now at you, Sister Letitia, what do you think he's thinking? Since you're wearing short pants. You don't like he doesn't like that thing. It, yeah. It's not that he doesn't like you. He doesn't like the sin that you're in, and he and he has a problem with you now okay. right. because you're not dressed right. But you've done it in ignorance. You understand? So how do you change that though? I learned. That's you, why I walked out here. Oh, praise learned. it to the most good. But how do you change that, John? What do we got to do now? Learn. You learn and what else? And you start doing it. It's called repentance. Uh, it's called repentance. Give me that in Acts. Is it chapter 5? Acts chapter 3, verse um, 3 and 19. Read that. We Bring must repent. Out. That is the gospel. The gospel is the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You're not black. You're not Hispanic. You're not Native American. That's not your nationality. You are the children of Israel. You understand it? You are God's chosen people. And you know what else? That's why I stopped. And all praise it to the most high. And also... Exactly, and you all learned it today, right? Look, we got off at the wrong foot, Sister Letitia, but it's yes. over with now. We love you, Sister Letitia. You understand that? Yes. Right. We love you. We love you, Brother John. That's why we're teaching you. Right. You understand right. that we're not out here to condemn you, but if you're out of order, we got to pop your hands just like a child, right? That's right. We got to do that thing because that's right. our job as the leaders in our community. Right. You understand that? Give me that. The book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Yeah. We bent. So the Bible is saying what? Repent! The Bible wants the so-called black and Hispanics to repent. Yep. Read. Ye therefore, and be converted. And be converted. How do you convert yourself? You know what I want, right? How do we convert ourselves? Because the only way to repent is by converting, meaning changing yourself. Change the way you dress. Change the foods you eat. Right. Change the day that you worship God on. Right. Right. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. It says the law of God is perfect. So we just read one, two laws about the hat and about our dress code, right? It says the law of the, the, law of the Lord is perfect. There's nothing against, that can go against that they read. Converting the soul. That's what changes you. God's laws. You learn God's laws and then you start doing it. We didn't come up here that new God dietary law. We didn't know none of those things. That's why we have compassion on our brothers and sisters. You understand that? Read. The testimony of the Lord is short. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. It is a big deal. No. Check us out. Oh, praise that's I, I literally I just I'm telling you I'm turning around and I heard you and I heard and then when I go up I'm not homeless I'm not no like I literally walked up and I heard like and I thought I'm and I said let me just pull up right and that's all I did. Oh, and then I asked hey, you your name. No, and you was like, why are you here? I said, <laughs> I say that. I said, but anyway, read that verse, read Acts chapter 3. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore. So the Bible is telling you to repent. Read. 
and be converted. And be converted. Now change and turn to the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. We can't go over all of the laws that the Most High has now. You understand that? But this is the starting point. Read. That your sins may be blotted out. Jesus Christ died in order to prepare you for the kingdom to forgive your sins that you've committed. For you to turn and change your ways from a life of sin to a life of righteousness. You understand that? Read. That when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Right, for when the Most High comes down to judge this place here with nuclear fire to destroy all of the evil on this earth here, you can be saved from that thing. You can be delivered from that thing as long as you convert and change your lives and turn to a life of the Most High God. Do you understand that thing? So, so how do we repent in 1 Kings chapter 8? No. Give me 1 Kings 8 because our people need to hear this thing. That's right. You understand that, John? You follow me? All praises. Read. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8 and verse 46. Yeah. If they sin against thee. So can you can we all admit that all of us have been in the midst of sin? All of us live in the midst, and all of us right now are struggling fighting against sin. Even us that's standing up here now. We'd be lying to you if we sat here and said we're walking perfectly in the eyes of God right now. Even to the to the thoughts that we have in our head is all. You understand that? But we fight that thing. We don't make excuses to sin. We must change. That's how we stop the degradation in our community. That's how we uplift our people and uplift their self-esteem to know that you're more than just a nigga. You're more than just a black man or a black woman. You understand that? Read. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. So there's no man that sinneth not, sis. Read. And thou be angry with them. So the Most High God is angry with us now. All praise and we appreciate you coming, sis. And we need to continue a dialogue with you and you and everybody else is in the earshot of this word. We must do that because we're building here in Charleston. We're building across the world. You understand? And all of our people need to hear this thing. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. We've been delivered to our enemies, sis and brother. These things happen to people that did this to us right here in Charleston. Our, our enemies did this to us. They're not our friends. They're not doing anything to us or for us that is for our good. You understand that? Even when they give you a job, they set up stipulations where you must break God's laws in order to keep this job. But you think they're doing good because you don't understand the Most High's words yet. You understand that? Read. And deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy. How are we carrying away captives? How do we get here in America, sis? On slave ships, right? It wasn't no normal captivity either. You understand that this was what happened to us didn't happen to no other nation of people. Y'all must understand that. And the reason why that give me that hold this, hold this. Give me Isaiah 22, verse 17. And the reason why it happened to us is because of who we are. We are God's chosen people. Only God can allow what happened to us to happen. That's right. You understand it for them to take an entire nation of people and bring us from the other God. end of the earth. All praises. Yes. And that's why we're here. That's why you did stop. Read that. Verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 22 and verse 17. Read. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with the mighty captivity. He said the Lord is going to do what? The Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. He's going to carry us away with a mighty captivity. A captivity never ever seen before man. You understand it? You got hundreds of brothers and sisters shackled and chained on the bottom of a slave ship defecating on one another, traveling for months at a time. That ain't never happened to nobody else. Wait, and when they landed here, their names were changed. Our women were raped. You were emasculated as a man, torn apart in half until you submitted to them. A mighty captivity. Read that again. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. With a mighty captivity. One of a captivity never seen before on earth. Read. And will surely cover thee. He will surely follow thee. Turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. You were turned and tossed like a ball into, you ever seen a ball in water and you ever splashed the waves, how that ball just bounces around on the waves? How do you think those slave ships were? Wait, when we were on those slave ships, we were violently turned and tossed like a ball. You understand that? Read, into a large country. This wasn't no small country. This is the greatest country on the earth today. And we built this country with our blood, sweat, and tears of our captivity. There shall thou come in this land right here. After this mighty captivity, shall we die? How did we die, Brother John? Because we wandered out of the way of God's understanding. What is the nation? Nation.
nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 